All right. And we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land and also to uh, you, Rich. Yes, thank you. Also, uh, welcome to all those uh, watching us on YouTube as well. So, Mike, we got a we got a lot to talk about. I'm not sure how much of it we're going to get to within our within our hour. We might go a little um, long, people. Try. Okay. I don't know. Rich doesn't want to take the take the two hours that I think it's going to take to talk everything that's happened this week in sports. Because that's a long video, Mike. It if is. You do, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube. That's a long video. That's we, a long video. Even if you put it, uh, even if you put us at two times the speed. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I just, man. We'll play it by ear. So, yeah. um, so um, we're we're gonna talk a little bit of March Madness. We got an update to share with you on that. We'll do a quick NASCAR corner. What we're gonna call a uh, so we'll kind of do the NASCAR as a fuel only pit stop. Yep. Quick in and out. And um, what else are we going to be talking about, Mike? We got N- we got uh, the MLB to talk about, which that might take a long time, by the way. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to have that to talk about. Plus, uh, we might get into NFL. And guess what? We got a new season of Mass Singer to talk about. Exactly. A lot of things to talk about. So stay tuned. Stay with us the entire time. Hopefully, we'll get it all in. If not, we'll give you a quick preview of what we'll talk about next week if we got to have some leftovers to carry over next week now. But all that and more, Mike. But what's the time to do? Roll the intro! Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa. This is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. And we're back. Okay, Rich, before we start anything, the first thing we do every week, like always, our poll question. This was our third place game, as it were. For uh, our tailgate food showdown, third place matchup, pulled pork went against burgers. How'd you vote? I went with burgers, Mike. Okay, same logic as last week. Yeah. Okay. It's messy. It's something that you normally would have at a tailgate. Um, pulled pork. I think people do at tailgates. I've done it at tailgate. And that's what I like, and I like doing pulled pork. I make a pretty mean pulled pork, too, so. You do. You know. You do. Uh, so, who, who won? The winner, as, on a 4-3 to three vote win, mm-hmm. close one here, pulled pork. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So, that's third place. Yeah, solid third place. Okay, uh, folks, this week we are starting a new poll series. Yes, we are. What is it, Mike? Because okay. this is all you. Okay, it's it's my concept, and you you and I are gonna help out together. But you're gonna you're gonna contribute a bit. We are doing best sports music. All right. So this can be anything from music you listen to, like that they play at the stadium. And I'm not talking like between games. I'm talking like, um, like everybody knows the 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 seventh inning stretch. You sing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." But there are other things that places play, like uh, like this week. The poll question is two seventh inning stretch songs, right? Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They do them around the seventh inning stretch. They they do it after take me out to the ball game. They sing uh, two songs and they're great. Uh, but it might be something like from a sports movie that you love, or um, songs about sports. So it's going to be a wide variety. Uh, we don't have it all hashed out yet, but this is our March Madness tournament, as it were. Yeah, it's very much a work in progress, so we're, so it, both Mike and I will be adding songs to a spreadsheet that we're building up. Um, Mike, I think 10 of you have it down as like a, um, sports 
songs about sports. Yeah. Sports things you would hear at stadiums. Yep. And maybe like or songs that were the featured song within a sports themed movie. Yep. All right. All right, Mike. So what's this week's matchup going to be? This week's matchup is going to be deep in the heart of Texas, played at Houston Astro Games. And the and the Rangers. Oh, and the Rangers. Wow, both yeah, of them do the it. Rangers do it too. Okay. And Roll Out the Barrels or Beer Barrel Polka. All right. As you hear when you go to Milwaukee. All right. We'll get that. Pull. Mike will get that pull up um, shortly after we get off air. And so watch for that to go live. Another thing to watch for on our webpage, on the, uh, on the Facebook page, we'll also have a link to it in the descriptions of our Facebook Live video, the YouTube video, and also on the podcast, our March Madness Yahoo Tourney Pick'em. Uh, it's going to be, we, we use Yahoo because that's our preferred site for fantasy sports. Uh, so look for that link if you want to join our uh, Tourney Pick'em group. No prizes, just for fun, because we're still a part. We're still a startup on there, on here. Um, it's we're not a startup anymore. We're established, well, okay, well, but established. we don't we don't make money doing this. We do this for fun. No, no. Uh, exactly. But you we're do get a shout out on the show. Yeah, we'll give you a shout out on the show through as the tournament progresses into the later rounds. So, Mike, anything else before we start making some left turns and pull in for a quick fuel-only pit stop in the NASCAR corner? No, I think we're good. All right, Mike. So, uh, the crew chief called into us and said it's time to come in and make quick pull, make a quick pit stop uh, into the NASCAR corner. Uh, the Penzo 400 from Las Vegas was last week. Mike, your race winner was Alex Bowman. Uh, Mike, your pick of Kurt Busch came in 13th. My pick of Joey Lugano came in 14th. So, Mike, you're on the board. It's now 2-1 to one between the two of us. Um, because we got a lot to cover, we're not going to go into Fantasy NASCAR to review the Fantasy NASCAR results from last week. Um, so, Mike, because it's a fuel-only pit stop, um, the roll-off mortgage 500 in Phoenix, Mike, you won last week. Who's your pick to win? Uh, I am going to pick Denny Hamlin. We're just going to be quick about it, folks. We're picking Denny Hamlin. So, All right. I'm going to go with his teammate, Martin Truex Jr. Okay. All right. You can play, watch that, catch that race 2.30 over on Fox. And Danica Patrick will be the guest analyst in the Fox booth with Clint Boyer and Mike Joy for a second week in a row. Uh, they haven't really announced who the next guest analyst will be um, joining Clinton and Mike in the booth as when they head back out east to Atlanta. Yeah. So, um, and uh, as a preview, this is definitely a preview for next week. We're not going to get into yeah. it. Uh, NASCAR has an electric car series that they're talking about doing. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll we'll talk about that next week. Uh, kind of our yeah. thoughts and what it kind of might look like. But let's head out of the NASCAR corner presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, on Fifth Avenue. I got it right today. You did, Mike. Good Fifth shot. Avenue, Moline. Check them out at their store in person or at their online store on eBay. Once again, that's Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Let's keep making left, left turns as we get into a big topic for the week the Major League Baseball. That's right. After weeks of hearing about how these guys were so far apart, we finally get an end to the lockout. Yeah, it's funny how that agreement came into place because if they had canceled another round of games, that would have put in jeopardy the the players getting paid for a full year Yeah, and also occurring a full year of service time. Hmm. Yeah. Funny how that goes, but it worked. That, it sounds that, like they're also going to be able to make 162 games work still. Yes. They, they have said that they will work out the games that were canceled will be played on off days or as double headers. Okay. Well, that'll be nice to, to have uh, happen. So let's look forward to watching and listening to double headers and games. By the way, speaking of double headers, one thing they agreed upon 
No longer will double headers be seven innings. That's right. That, so let's give a full rundown of what they agreed to. Okay. So the changes coming that are going to go into effect this year, or will be going into effect soon. Uh, the collective, um, the CBT will be two hundred thirty million and twenty-three, and will go up to two forty-four a million a year um, in the next in the final year of the collective bargaining agreement. The penalty, in addition to the new tier that starts at sixty million past the threshold, the highest tier used will hit forty million above the threshold. Minimum salary for new players will be uh, $700,000, and it could go up to seven hundred and eighty. dollars Pre-arbitration bonus pool of $50 million, and the postseason will now be 12 teams. Yeah, that, that's... 12 teams. Yeah. Um, and then possibly going into effect, um, they're going to have discussions about an international draft yeah. for international free agents Yep. that could go into effect they're gonna. They tabled the discussions on that, and that could go into effect. And possible rule changes coming in next year could be larger bases, banning the infield shift, and a pitch clock. Yeah, um, and I mean we have the universal DH, which you know. Yep, and a universal DH. I forgot that one. That's they happening this year, so. I don't want to be so coming. Do you up. Like, Am I an old what, man? What do you like coming out of that? I like that we're going to have a 162 game baseball season this year. Yep, I can agree with that one. I do like that. I appreciate the um, the the uh, the minimum salary increase for players um, as part of the new collective bargaining um, agreement. Uh, I like the concept. And we'll see how this works of the pre-arbitration bonus pool. So, what the have you looked into that at all? I really haven't. So, what it is, the concept behind it is that uh, if players, if the players um, on rookie deals think they deserve more money. There's going to be standard bonuses for those players, like that they get, and that money comes from this pool for the through the league. So, younger players will be able to get more money because they don't have a say in what they make at all. It's a standard base contract. Your rookie deal is basically you don't you don't really get a say in that contract. And so this is for guys that are making making billions of dollars or making making plays that are making teams money. They'll be able to say, okay, well, I get so much money out of this based on my performance. That's right. So before the minimum salary, the league minimum salary was 575.5. Yep. Thousand, and now it could be. Now it's more than a hundred thousand dollars. No, now it's seven hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And it it will peak, and it's going to grow every year. It will peak at a hundred and seven or seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and that's the final year of this CBA when we go into the next round of negotiations. Hopefully, we can. Man, the problem. Ugh, do we get into this 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 discussion? The problem with baseball. The fact, the fact that baseball players and the and the team owners, since the inception of professional baseball, have always been on opposite sides of the table. It's been an argument that they've had for years. Owners, it it basically comes down to owners hate players and players hate owners. It's sad because they both depend on each other. They both need to get over this. But for some reason, in the in the way that things have gone since... I mean, if 
you've seen the docu the baseball documentary by Ken Burns, right, Rich? Bits and pieces of it. Yeah. Okay, at the beginning of like in it, they talk about that at the beginning. That was. It's been that way since the beginning. Owners were players owned the 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 players or teams owned the players. They the players had no rights. Period. You got drafted. That's who you dealt with, and that's who you dealt with for, unless they decided to get rid of you. You had nothing to do with anything. And now players unionize. So which the history of that and how ugly that was was terrible but you would think that at some point they would realize i mean football's got it right they realize that they need their players you think rich you can you can wave your finger at me if you think i've gone too far when i say this one and you could disagree you think that the that all of the owners agree with the Black Lives Matter statements that they put on things? I'm going to tell you, most. No, probably not. I'm going to say, out of all the owners, not all of them agree with it. And in fact, some of them think that that, that organization is terrible. And in fact, some of them are have come out and, and were Trump supporters, continue to be Trump supporters. Does that mean that uh I, I mean when you look at that and they disagree with the way things are going and blah 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 yeah and we'll that's all fine and dandy we don't need to really talk about all of that stuff but they don't agree with that but they realize that the players are what makes them money the players are what they have to appreciate the players so what do they do they say let's do it we want to honor the players we want to honor the people that are are allowing us to make this money and major league baseball doesn't they don't like yes they do it in the political sense but when it comes to anything else it's always at odds the players versus the owners and i don't get it yeah i i'd have to agree on that one mike it does seem like none of the other sports leagues have that much players versus owners just butting heads like that much yeah you don't get as much in the nba you don't really hear about any about anything between the players association and the nhl and just like you said just, the nfl doesn't have as have as much of an agreement disagreement with their players association and the with the union and, and the league itself yeah uh, so you, so you gave your your point of view on what you liked and what you didn't like about yep. the new rules that are either going into effect or are expected to go into effect next season. Um, I also like that it's going to be a 162 game season. I'm glad that the playoffs. Personally, I didn't want to see the playoffs expanded. Yeah. Uh, but it, the owners, with that TV money, the extra money that they can get from that, it was going, probably going to happen. So I'm glad it was only 12 and not 14 because that's like half the league making the playoffs. Yeah. So what's the point we, of the regular season? Maybe? There's there's already potential that and and it happens on occasion that a sub 500 team makes the playoffs. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm going to be interested to see what happens with jersey with uh, advertisements on jerseys and helmets. Do you want to see an iconic like our our favorite team, Mike the Cubs? There's already. I, I already really don't necessarily get – there already is advertising on every single jersey uniform yep. with the Nike swoosh needing to be on the front instead of instead of on the sleeve. Yep. But, I mean, do you really want to see an iconic uniform like the Cubs or the Yankees or the Dodgers or the Red Sox have that, like an NBA-style patch like in the upper left or right-hand corner of the jersey? I don't mind it as much. I think the problem is, is that we say, I mean, the the owners are saying, well, we, we don't make enough money to do this, except we now know you do. Yeah. It's public record now that even the, Braves the Atlanta Braves make money. And they make good money. 
So yeah, I think one one player, one thing uh, I follow a blog called uh, UniWatch. Yeah. And somebody was saying, you know what? You know what? I'd love to see. I'd love to see a DraftKings advertisement put on to make their have the Reds have an agreement with DraftKings or a betting site. Oh yeah. And then have somebody put that on a Pete Rose jersey. <laughs> that would be a great one. Um, so th- that's the other side. Are they going to put them on, like, if I buy this jersey again, if I buy a new jersey, are the advertisements going to be on my jersey or just the players' jerseys? I think they're on, it could depend on what, like, level of jersey you buy. Because I think if you buy an NBA jersey, the top tier of an NBA jersey, it has the, it has that team's advertising sponsor on it as well. Then I don't want to buy top tier jerseys. Yeah. Like that's gonna make me buy the 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 Walmart brand jerseys that don't have ads on it, or the no, I, 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 or the Gordman. Back in the day with Gordmans, you could buy jerseys that you everybody knew what they were, but they didn't actually ever say who they were for. But you could tell, like my that baby blue one that I have. Mm-hmm. That we every time we would go to games, like Rich, you gotta understand, Rich and I have been to dozens of games together. Um, and I would wear this Jersey that I really liked, but rich made fun of me cause it wasn't an official Jersey. And we would go to places and people were like, where, we, where'd you get that? The color like you, and you agreed you liked the colors, but it wasn't an official Jersey. Gordman's put them out. I don't know how, why, like they got away with it somehow, but they were never a Jersey ever worn by the team. But it was the team colors, and they somehow kind had... of, kind of the team colors, and the 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 Chicago on it looked pretty close to the right lettering for the Chicago Cubs, but it wasn't. Like yeah. the, there was no like, but people loved it. Stuff like that, like it's like I'll buy, I'll keep buying those type things. Yeah. No, I I don't think you'll see the. The close to jerseys, like at Walmart, having all the same advertisements. I don't think you buy like a Nike branded jersey uh, at your local Walmart either. There, no. So have no. something that looks like a like looks like the official. Still have the trademark NBA or uh, baseball logo and colors and everything, but it, probably not the officially. It's not going to be close to the officially licensed. So no, I, I don't think you'll see, but. Obviously, if you went to went up to Wrigleyville, and either you went to the team store in um, Gallagher Way, or probably one of the one of the local stores. Yeah. Um, one of the local stores. Those jerseys that are probably going to be for sale there probably will have the team. Will have the Nike swoosh and the and the advertisement. And the team patch, as it were. Yeah, and any team patches that are currently on that that season's uniform. Yeah, so I don't like it. Where they go with those? If it'll be on the sleeves, or or if it, if they'll be able to put them anywhere on the uniform. But I don't think it. I don't think. I think it's probably going to be along the lines of the NBA, where it's one patch in one particular spot on the uniform. I don't. It's not going to turn into do what soccer, what the soccer teams do or the WNBA jerseys where there's multiple advertisements on the jersey and it's certainly not going to turn into a NASCAR driver's fire suit either. Yeah. So um, the 12 team playoffs, uh, we, we both agree that that's a little weird and we don't need that many players teams. I thought it was already enough. Um, but how about the, how about some of the, uh, the memo uh, indications like um, a home run derby instead of extra innings for the All Star break or the All Star game. I, l- I like it because most of the time that will allow the managers to play everybody. Yeah. Because there was always that little bit of strategy of, well, I, I can't use every, I may need to save back a pitcher or two, or I might need to choose to not play one of the batters just in case it goes into extra innings. So yeah. and it's our, and it's an exhibition game anyway, so why not have a fun way to end it? I do miss it goes into extra innings. I, I will say and I continue to agree, 
I missed that the I missed back when the uh, the All Star Game determined who had home field advantage. Hmm. Give it a meaning. Bring that back. Um, All right. Any so the other things that kind of came out of the memo that you're referring to with the All Star Game. Yep. Is um. Sorry, they they did announce they're going to have some international games with games being played in Mexico City each May from 23 to 26, London in 23, 24, and 26, Paris in 25, and San Juan, Puerto Rico in September of 25 and 26. Puerto Rico and Mexico make sense. London, I don't know if I I don't know if they follow baseball enough to care. And Paris? They're, I think they're just trying to get an international foothold. If you're going to go over an ocean, why not go over the Pacific and go to Japan? You know, it's funny you say that. South like, Korea. There. They are planning to go to Asia in 24 and Tokyo specifically in 25. Okay. I mean, I whatever. I think the, the whole concept... like. Yes, you need to widen your base, but I think those ones are a little, uh, a little odd, yeah. a little extreme. No I, I need. Don't see the, I don't see the, the reason to go over to Europe, Asia. Yeah. You yeah. Totally. You could easily do season opening series in. Uh, you could uh, do season openers in Asia. in Asia. You could do season openers. I, I think the best season openers are going to be, go to the Caribbean. Take some of those colder weather cities. That how many? How great would it be to have a Cubs game in Puerto Rico, the Dominican, Haiti, Mexico, any of those places? That baseball is king of sports in those places. Mm-hmm. Dominican baseball. I mean, we have more Dominicans playing baseball than we have probably anybody else outside of American. Mm-hmm. Why don't we go to the Dominican? That is where I think we should go. Um, speaking of tra- international travel, there is an issue, though, for players this year. There is. Supposedly, they, the Players Association has agreed that if a player is unvaccinated, they cannot play a game. In, they can't travel with the team to Toronto. Yep. And they will not get paid for that game because they will automatically be put on the commissioner's restricted list. Yeah. Um, I mean, it makes sense. The laws in Canada are a little stricter about it than we have here in the U.S. So does that mean if you're a t- if you're a member of the Blue Jays and you're unvaccinated, can you not play in Toronto? Huh. That's can a good question. Home games in Toronto. That is a great question. Because you're technically crossing the border when the team leaves Toronto. Yeah. Game. Yeah. That's... That, that really wasn't covered in that story. And it, doesn't the city of New York have a similar – New York City have a similar stature with yeah. unvaccinated players? That's why Kyrie Irving can't play for the Mets. So is that – But that's only for home team players. Yeah. So like a Yankee or a Met – do they fall? Does that fall under the same jurisdiction? Because they That's don't. What pl- I'm wondering. They haven't really talked about that. Yeah, but yeah, the Bronx and 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 um, the Bronx and Queens and are Queens. within New York City limits. Right. So those will probably be a part problem for it. Um, but the traveling players can still play there. Yeah, that's what I've never gotten. I mean, they and they supposedly the Nets tried to get an exception for Kyrie, but he said that I think the New York mayor, if I remember correctly, and I, I could be wrong on this, they said that they didn't feel that it was right to give an exception for Kyrie because that would compromise the, the, the purpose reason of why the they put that, yeah. yeah, the purpose of that law. To, I don't agree with it. I, I don't care. I, whatever. Do your thing. Um, but again, that's, I mean, the, the teams know that going in now. The players going knowing know it going in. You gotta, I mean, you gotta make your own decisions, people. Mm-hmm. Um, neither of us really touched on larger bases. That not a big yeah. deal, or do you want to see what what happens? What happens? I'm intrigued by it. I think the concept is 
it's it's designed so that you have safer while people are running to get to the base your first baseman can be off to one side or the other and not impede the person and you don't have the same rolled they let ankles or mm-hmm. stepping on each other that's that's the goal of it he we'll see what it what happens when it comes no. i i don't There's, know um they're also saying it could incentivize stealing base stealing yeah because now yeah. there's you won't necessarily maybe have as many plays of the player sliding off of the base technically and the and the fielder holding the tag on the runner and then all of a sudden you have the player you have like the javi check 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 because he he came off the base do the replay and I, but i'm okay but that's not what I, I don't know why that's a problem like no i, I don't it, think it is a problem, i think but that that's one yeah. of the reasons why they wanted a larger base yeah, okay. I'm I'm actually okay with that then. Um so when it comes to what are th- so now that we have that, we also have some new TV deals to talk about. Uh Apple TV yeah. is getting Friday night baseball. Yep, that will be and they have said that that will be exclusive. So if you so if you don't have so for example, for our Chicago Cubs yeah. If you don't have Apple TV Plus, that game's not going to be on the marquee network, even if you have the marquee network. And if you subscribe to MLB.TV, that game will be blacked out because of the deal that Apple TV has in place to make it an exclusive game. I suppose, but they only get one game, right? So it's gonna... I believe it's going to be a, like a doubleheader. Like, oh. So they'll have two games on Friday night. So if the Cubs fall on that, are scheduled for Friday night baseball. The Cubs play TV Friday night. afternoon baseball. They don't play night baseball. On the road, they play night games, though. Okay, on occasion. But still, at Wrigley, they play Friday afternoon at one thirty, one twenty. Yeah, so a home game probably isn't going to be effective. Right? Okay, that's Still, fine. the radio broadcast has no effect on this whatsoever. Okay. Peacock TV also agreed to a deal. And they're getting a rather odd time slot, in my opinion. Okay. They're get, they're going to get a Sunday, almost late morning, or early afternoon time slot. So like the eleven thirty to the one thirty time slot, right? Eleven thirty to noon time slot. Okay. So more than likely, you're not going to see a West Coast team get into that. That's going to be a window. Cubs. That that'll be a, a Cubs classic game. That could be for a Sunday afternoon. A yeah. lot of and a lot of games on Sundays are, except for the one Sunday night game. Yep. Most of those games are being scheduled on Sun our afternoon ball games anyway, because that's getaway day for a lot of. Yep. Games. Um, and you know what? I mean, why not add another, another, you can count on it game. Used to be that Fox had the Saturday game of the week that started at at just afternoon. Uh, you watch your cartoons, and then you'd roll right into baseball, and that's what you did every Saturday. Or at least that's what I did every Saturday. I was a nerd yeah. of a kid, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, Fox is still going to be covering games. ESPN is now going to be just doing um, Sunday night. They're not going to have a Monday night or a Wednesday night baseball is gone out of, off of ESPN. Okay. And Turner, Turner Sports will still have a game, TBS, I think. So probably an Atlanta game a week most game. of the time. I'm sorry. Probably an Atlanta game most of the time. No, no, it, it's a national. They, okay. they put national. Um, so one other thing that kind of came out of the collective bargaining agreement, um, you're going to see more of a balanced schedule starting next year. So you're not. So they're going to limit the number of rivalry games to where, in theory, you, it's the inner league system of well, all these teams you're in the central this year you're going to be matched up against the teams in the eastern division yeah. of the opposite league instead now you're going to see more of a balanced schedule to where technically you'll be playing all 32 teams wow within the course of the year no more i don't like that play. i like that even less so, you Rich. See, so for us, you're going to see less Cubs Cardinals games, less Cubs Brewers games. How do they do? Wait, time out. Whoa, time out. Time out there. So you're cutting back the number of games you play in your division. 
Yeah. Um, what? So instead of those extra games that you get against the Cardinals, the Brewers, the Reds. But the whole concept of a division is that these are the guys you play all the time. Yeah. It makes for less out. travel. It makes... Jesus, help me. Help me not smack somebody. All right. So the Ooh, 12 buddy. Team playoffs. Yeah, the 12 team playoffs, Mike. Yeah. You're going to see the, it's going to work with you're going to see the number one overall seed get best overall record gets the number one seed. They get a bye. Okay. The team with the second best record in the, in your league also gets a bye. Those okay. Two seeds, all right, the number three seed, the third best division winner. Yep. The number three seed, four through six seeds are the three teams with the best record that did not win their division. Yep. No, no more tiebreaker games. They're going to use a system of tiebreakers that would be used in ties instead of a game 163. And in the Man, wild card. why can't we? I like more free baseball. I know. Me too. So that I guess there's going to be tiebreakers. They gotta so take this the stuff away. Round, the, the three C will host the six. Three game series, same with the four versus the five. The winners will advance to the division rounds. As we've previously known, there's no reseeding. The number one team automatically hosts the winner of four or five, while the two host the winner of three six. Okay. I it that's fine. Whatever. So one thing that kind of broke it down, this could have totally changed. I want to Roll the clock back to 2018, Mike. Yeah. What happened in 2018, Mike? The Cubs and the Brewers technically had to play a game 163. Yeah. Which forced the Cubs into the wild card game that they lost to the Colorado Rockies back. Yeah. Under this format, the Cubs would have had the number one overall seed that year. Wow. Instead yeah. of having to play a game 163. Okay. How could that have been different for the Cubs? They would have gotten the winner of Brewers versus Rockies. They would have played the Rockies, and the Rockies would have beat them anyway. In a five-game series? In a five-game series. Yeah, you're right. Maybe not. Maybe not. And they would have had rest that year. Yeah. Could have been different. We could have gotten have another been. World Series, but again. Could have. Okay. That, that's good. good point. I... I don't know. I, I still like – I don't I, – I like game 163. I mean, that's just – but, okay, that's fine. We'll, uh, I'll take it. There's worse things in the world. Um, So, again, we have to start – because we're starting baseball in three weeks. Yeah, April 7th. So, Rich, you haven't even – it's not even on the outline. We got to talk preview baseball. We do. We got to make that schedule. That will probably be discussed over the next three weeks. We got to discuss our division winners, um, our playoff seating. Winners. Apparently, playoff seating. Yeah, we got to put six teams into the playoffs per league now. Yeah, and a World Series matchup and Championship Series matchups. Um, we we got a short timetable on this. I thought we. I, I didn't. I forgot to put it in the outline, but I'm glad we'll we'll do. And there's major major free agents. Huge. In fact, half of the Cubs, half of the people the Cubs traded away are still free agents. You are correct. None of the only one that was traded away, Javi. Javi signed in Detroit, but Rizzo's still out there. Kyle Schwarber's out there. Nick Castellino's still out there. Bryant's still out there. Could be signed. So, Would you like the Cubs to bring any of those four guys back? The guy that I think they needed to they needed to keep is the only one that signed with the team. At this point, I don't necessarily think I want all of those guys back. I don't want all of them back, definitely. Um, no, no, you wouldn't get. I don't think the Cubs are going to sign any all four of those guys. I could see either a Bryant or a Rizzo. Either one of those, their their fan favorites. They both have said I would love to come back to the Cubs. Uh, I think there is reason to believe that that might happen. But I don't know that I really care. Like, I want the best guys that we can get. 
Now, there's a lot of money out there that we can spend, but we got to do it wisely. We still got a boat anchor hanging out there in right field. Yep. He's not going to go anywhere. What's, what's he got to do with anything? Other than suck money out of the team. Again, I think our... I, this is going to be slightly a hot take. The infield and the outfield don't really matter. It's the guy standing on the mound most of the time that makes the big that, that should be that we should be worried about. And who do we have for pitching staff right now? You got three guys that I can think of right off the top of my head. You got Stroman, yep. Marcus Stroman, Kyle Hendricks, Albert Adbert Alzala. Yeah. The four and five spot oh Wade Miley. We signed Wade Miley. Well, we did sign Wade Miley. I forgot about that. Okay. So you got Four, so you got four slots that are probably four guys that are penciled in, but we don't know. Who but do we have an ace? Who's our ace? Technically, it's probably Kyle Hendricks. Is that the guy you want as an ace? I think Kyle can be a grid number two guy, but I don't see him as an ace. Right. He's not the guy that's going to go out there. Here's the problem. Here's my look at what an ace has to be. The ace has to set the tone for the for a team. Kyle's Kyle's play is not a tone set. It is a tone setting thing, but it's not that fiery play that you necessarily want on that. You got to have a guy that's going to be big and that's going to get your team fired up. True? Right? You agree with yeah. that? Or a guy that Kyle is a losing streak. Kyle is not the guy. Kyle can can stop a losing streak. But only because, only if he's on that day. There are regularly enough times that he has off days that it ain't going to work. And so Kyle's for me, is not the one. So we need a, a number one. We need somebody. And there, I mean, if I remember correctly, uh, there's a few decent starting pitching free agents yeah I, I think there are still some good starting pitchers so right now so we kind of discussed the starting rotation the only guy is for sure that we know on the back end of the bullpen we is Rowan Wick yeah and a bunch of no names are filling that's up the, the other side bullpen. yeah what are you really doing in your bullpen right now like if you don't have great like it doesn't matter if we get a million points in a game if the other team gets a million and one point, we lose the game. I don't care if Bryant and Rizzo can hit a thousand home runs a year. What's that going to do if our p starting pitchers can't, sh and our closers, I mean, if our start, heck, even if our starters go six innings, seven innings without giving up a run, we have a 10 run lead. Does it matter if our bullpen can't close out the game and the other team gets eleven points in the last three in the last two and a half innings? Yeah, pitching I think is going to be the big thing for the Cubs. I think they could. There's a part of me that almost wants to see what the hitters can do. Just roll with the hitters that are going to be starting. That are going. To Isn't that what I was saying? Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. We got. We have guys that have showed talent. Around the around the field and around the the infield, outfield and infield, we got decent talent in those spots. What do we have for pitching right now? I think it's probably one of the more suspect pitching staffs in the league. I would even put in the league, not just that we like in the league right now. I don't trust our pitching staff over anybody. Yeah, so. Are, are you thinking what I'm thinking, which is it's probably going to be a it could be a long year this year, just based on who we have in the pitching staff? Okay, we're going to make our first prediction of the baseball year. You ready for it? Sure. What is your over under spot for wins for the Cubs? One hundred and sixty-two games. I'm going to give them. Um, Eight. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more optimistic. 
I'm gonna go with seventy. Okay. I wanted to be. I wanted to give you a nice, uh, a nice guess, but I think they're gonna be one better than sixty-nine. Nice. Guess. Yeah. So I think they're gonna be seventy. The uh, what MLB has them at right now, seventy-two point okay. five. And I think that's probably where they're gonna be right now. Oh, I think that's a little high. There's still a lot of there's still a lot of unknowns. I think there. there's yeah, I think there's too many unknowns to put put it that high. I think 70 is where we're going to be at, which sucks. Yeah, but without a with maybe if they choose to go with the starting rotation, if they choose to go into the season with the roster as it is, which I almost think they should. They they got some good prospects to come it, out of the trades that they made last year. I can agree if you're talking about everything but pitching. They need to fix their pitching staff. But if they go with it, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Let's go with it, and let's kind of weather the storm until those prospects start getting to the upper levels of the minors where you can see, all right, how many years, how many years, how many more, how much more time in the minors are you going to need before you can come up? Here's this. Or, or they just wait until Jason Hayward's off the payroll, and then that's when they start investing in free agents. There's some good good concept there. So, Rich, Although, here's the scary thing for me. Okay. 2016, we win the World Series. Going into the yep. 2017 season, you and I have ta- had talked about, and it was known that the Cubs not only had – the team that won the World Series and was looking to go back to the World Series the next year. It's what the expectation was. They were a great team. But they also had, and this is what, this is where I'm I'm scratching my head six years later. Yeah. Six years later, I'm scratching my head. I'm thinking, what happened? We had the number one farm system in the league on top of it. Not only did we have the the team that won the World Series, we gave up some of our farm system, but we were like, we still got, look at all these guys that we have on our farm system that are coming up. And we still haven't been able to do anything with it. We had the number one farm system at the time. Yeah, but some of those players went to New York to get a role as Chapman. That's that is one of the big ones. One of there. those guys, yeah, one of those guys that was on the team that was a rising star and on the 2016, 15, and sixteen teams. Jorge Soler went to Kansas City to bring in Wade Davis to be our closer for two years. And but again, we there we, were some trades that were made to supplement and improve we, the big league roster. The, and they did. And I mean, again, getting. Getting Chapman is the reason we made the World Series. Like I'm not, it's the reason we won the World Series. I'm not denying that, but and this is where this is where the issue is. This is where I question it. Does that? We still had. It wasn't just our rating wasn't just the top prospects. Our prospects going down to our single A team. We were considered the best farm system. And we had guys three years out, two years out, a year out, five years out that were supposed to be coming in, and we've traded a bunch of them off. Some of them have come up. And some of them have come up and been traded. Nick Castellano. That was one of those farm system kids. Uh, No, Castellanos we acquired from Detroit. Oh, who... Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, sorry, but I mean, we had we had plenty of farm system kids, and most of them have either petered out or we've traded away now. What's the point of having the greatest farm system if you're going to use them for trade bait? At least get something that's going to help you win the World Series, and we haven't seen that done well enough, except for the one trade that made the difference, the one year rental or the the finishing rental. On a role as Chapman. Yeah, I mean, I I don't put the 2018. That'd be the 17. The 17 team was a great team too. 
Yeah. We all we just went up against a very good Dodgers team as yeah. well. Yeah. And we barely got by the Dodgers in sixteen the year yeah. the year they we won the series too. But if you look at what happened in eighteen, nineteen, eighteen and nineteen is where I'm kind of scratching my head as all right, what happened to that team? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great that, point. That's, that's where I start to think about all right, what could have been? What where what went wrong? Did we invest in the wrong players? Or did the contracts just not age well? Yeah. And I think that I think a lot of it is contracts didn't age well. And then we invested in I mean we 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 had I mean at one point in time we had five guys that that were in the the that were either in the triple A or at that made it to the majors and played with five different guys that were labeled as catchers. The amount of catchers we had was ridiculous. So we traded some of those away. We moved some of them out uh, away from that position and they did all right. But were we invested was was our farm system investing in the wrong things at the time too? Might have been. Might have been. Anyway, okay. Um so what but we do know who's going to be guiding the Cubs at least for another 2 years. David Ross will be back. He has guaranteed years in 23 and 24 with an option for 2025. So at least you're not going, at least we know who's going to be in charge of the Cubs for the next couple of years. Who's going to be in charge of the rebuild? Yeah. And and I think that's an important part. I don't think I want to go through a cycle of firing and firing a manager every two to three years because they're, not meeting expectations. We know. I mean, the expectations this year is if we if we hit seventy two, I'm happy. By the way, if we hit seventy two, I'm actually I think that's better than I I think we're we we should do this year. And, and we and we perform expect, respectable against the Cardinals and Brewers. Yeah, and I mean, Bucks. obviously that's always a goal, but I I still think, um, I still think that that's one of those. As long if we if we hit seventy two wins, I don't think that even if we even if we get swept by the Brewers, I can still be okay with it. All right, all right. So Mike, you put it. What are we? Where are we at on time to see where we are? Where we'll go next? Okay, right now we are at the fifty two and a half minute mark. So all right, do you want to keep going and do a long show, or do you want to go to our quick hits and uh, we'll? jump into or or go into the uh to our uh mass singer uh let's go to those four quick hit stories we'll save the nfl news that's well, all I nfl guess... news i guess we have the the top one but two the other NFL two in nba let's do the um, nba let's do the westbrook well, and then we'll well, we'll do westbrook and then mass wing singer all right, only because it was about two weeks ago we missed it last week yep. what did you want to say about the nfl combine did you measure your hands, Rich? I did not measure my hands. You were supposed That's... to measure. We oh. didn't. Ah, Rich. It was something I know. Okay. It was easily something. That was a big topic of discussion for maybe the top-rated pro passer in the so draft. From, scene. from here uh, to here, you, you measure, okay? Okay. What's your over-under on my hand size? You gotta be, at least be over eight and a half. I'd have to say. I'm over eight and a half. Know. You're right. So you have bigger hands than the top-rated pro passer. Do you, do you got a That's, Do you got a better guess? Because it's bigger than that, Rich. I, I'm gonna say, are you at nine and a half? I'm at nine and se- at nine and five eighths. Hmm. Okay. I'm one eighth bigger than a ha- five nine and a half. Which puts me yeah. as an average quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> like, that's the average. I didn't think that my hands were that big, but then I find out that I have nine. And All right. Rich, we got to know what yours is. The mm-hmm. people are wondering, Rich. Let me see. I think I see a tape measure here. Hold okay. On. He's going to do it. So, folks, <laughs> this is one of those things that, honestly, it's one of those measurements that they do every year. So hand-to-hand? So it's from the your tip of your thumb to the pink tip of your pinky. 
All right, I'm going to try and do this. So keep keep going, Mike. Go ahead. So this is one of those that that uh, people talk about, and this is used as a metric. And yes, it's. I think there's something to that. Uh, you need to know the site, but I think more importantly, how what's your grip strength? What's your all these? Uh, I think there are much better indicators. We've seen the we've seen a kid this kid with eight and a half inch hands throw a football, and he can throw it pretty decently. Why are you? Um, you got a? Do you got something close? Or you just? Tip? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I can't. Okay. Next week. Next week. Next week. We'll have Amy help you out with that. Next week yeah. we'll get the we'll get the hand size measurement for Rich. So yeah, um, the combine happened this week. Uh, which means, you know, measuring stupid things like your hand size, measuring stupid things like how fast you run a 40, because, you know, the 40-yard dash makes a difference in the world. By the way, um, let's talk about that Cooper Cup's 40 time was not that great, and yet everybody's saying he's the new greatest wide receiver in the league. Yeah, and you've got you've got people comparing the 40-yard dash times of, like, 350-pound defensive linemen and saying, well, this guy's this guy has a faster forty yard dash time than Patrick Mahomes. Right. Right. It doesn't make it, it. It does not make sense for that to be a a metric for which your entire fifty million dollar contract is based on. Fifty million a year. I think your performance on the field is a better metric than any of that, which is what we've seen. I mean, Tom Brady, his 40 time wasn't that fast. But wait, he's the greatest quarterback of all time. Wait, what? So, and, and again, hand size, there is something to be said about that. But that's like saying that because, uh, because, um, Drew Brees, or was it Drew Brees? Yeah, Drew Brees is under is a hair under six foot tall. He's not, he's not going to be a franchise quarterback. He He's not a franchise. He's too short to be a franchise quarterback. Like, come on. We're in the 21st century. Can we, can we look at tape? Which isn't tape anymore. It's digital. That makes more of a difference to me. If I'm a scout, I'm looking at how you do on a field. I'm looking at how you're, your ability to understand, to watch the video and tell me what you think is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Watch the video and read that defense. Now I'm going to put, yep. put you behind it and I'm going to set up. This is what, if, if I was a scout and I wanted to do a, a combine or something of this sort, what I'm going to do, what I want to see at the combine for quarterbacks is I want to have them line up behind a center, have a defense set up. And say, tell me what what de- that defense call is and what's your play. That's what I want to know. I don't care about how well you do on the whatever the Lipnitz test that they use to how high you can jump and smack a pole or how fast you can run the forty. Look at that defense and tell me what it's gonna do. What's the, what do you have to change for your protection? Because those things are things I you can get taught. But if you don't have those things, is it worth the investment to put you in and make you a quarterback in the NFL? So, yeah. So let's stay in the NFL. Yep. The two things came out about players. Okay. Let's. Deshaun Watson's not facing charges. A grand no, jury not. decided. By the way, folks, do criminal I criminal charges now? Yes. Criminal charges. Right. The grand jury decided. They heard testimony from the girls. They heard all this stuff. They said that he didn't do anything criminal. Does that mean he didn't do inappropriate things? No. Is it is it illegal for him to get a massage and for his... I, and again, I didn't listen to half of it, but for his... A, his male appendage to rub up against a girl as he flips over intentionally or not. Is that illegal? No. Is it inappropriate? Probably. 
Is what he did illegal? According to a grand jury, no. I didn't sit through all the testimony they did. Now, yep. is it inappropriate enough that I think that, ooh, man, do I want him on my team? There's the question, Rich. You're the GM of the Bears right now. I'm making you the GM of the Bears. Your dream, One of your dream jobs. You get a pick. I'm, I'm going to say no. I'm going to stick with I'm going to stick with the course and see what we got in Justin Fields. You're not going to hire Deshaun Watson? I mean, I agree. Now, yeah, how about how about I put is... time out? I'm a, I'm a move it, I'm a change it up. You're the quarter ooh, best one yet. You are the GM for the Indianapolis Colts. Who do you got on your quarterback roster right now? Exactly. Nobody that ma- yeah. that matters. Nobody that you know. Deshaun, you, you, Houston calls and says, hey, I, I noticed you need a quarterback. Are you taking that call? I think you take the call to listen to it. To Do you make a decent offer? Them. Yeah, make the decent offer. I think the teams that I've, that have, that are supposedly connected to wanting the trade for him, Carolina, Seattle, maybe even Tampa. Yeah, and and Indy, I think would be should be interested. They should be, but I don't. If you're the Texans, are you going to trade what used to be your franchise quarterback, face of your franchise in your within the division? Yeah, that's a great that's a great point. Now that's why I didn't think Indy even even I don't bigger. Think he would go to Indy even bigger. This does not mean he doesn't face charge or he doesn't face a suspension by the league. Nope. Because the the civil cases still need to be resolved and be heard by the judge, yeah, as well. They, now, those got put up; those got put on hold during the criminal investigation. Now, I I wonder, and this is again, it's just me wondering, folks. I'm not I'm not a legal expert in any way, shape, or form. Don't take anything we say on this show as legal advice or legal understanding. Uh, this is just me as a lay person who sits here and does nothing, uh, but think about sports and watch sports and listen to sports commentators and blah 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 recycles it and feeds it to mm-hmm. you uh, is is it as a GM are you allowed to call the commissioner's office and say hey we're, we're in a trade negotiations how long am I is he sitting on my sidelines without anything well in one article I did read they were show they were looking at the last time something like this happened, which was Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. He got suspended, I think it was between four and six games. Yeah. Because of inappropriate conduct at a bar in Georgia, at a place in Georgia, to where I think he was even, he had sexual assault charges brought against him, and he got suspended for conduct detrimental to the league. So I think Deshaun yep. Watson's definitely going to face a, suspen- a suspension. It's just how long it's going to be. Um, so yeah, I think anybody that's going to acquire him has got to have that in mind before they pull the trigger on the trade. Yep. So another person we're not going to see on the, that we, what we know for sure we're not going to see on the field this year, Calvin Ridley. Yeah. Calvin Ridley suspended for gambling on games while he was, while he was put, while he was inactive from the Falcons, while he stepped away for mental health reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a, a meme that I shared with you, and it's not really a meme. It's just a list. So yeah. NFL major suspensions. Ray Rice beats his fiance. How many games does he get, Rich? I believe if I remember it, you, you got two games. Okay. Greg Hardy beats his girlfriend, throws her on the bed with guns everywhere, and says, I'm going to use these on you if you ever leave me. In a video. How many games does he get? Was it three games, Mike? It was four. Okay. Wow. That's harsh. Okay. Adrian Peterson beats his child, has felony child abuse charges leveled against him. Six games. Yeah. Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott. Go ahead. Hitting women. Yeah, hitting women. Six games. Josh Gordon? Josh Gordon. Smoking Smoking weed. Smoking weed. Six seasons between appeals and multiple yeah. relapses in now, 
Now, th now this is just those charges. We didn't talk about Ray Rice's uh, murder. Yeah, Ray Lewis. Ray he... Lewis's murder. We didn't talk about. I mean, <laughs> come on now. We yeah. And Calvin Ridley gets 17 games for using FanDuel, a legal site. A site that's partnered with the NFL. And he does it. A, he, do, he the only games he bet, again, he bet on with his team, he bet for them to win. And he wasn't even playing in those games. Yeah, I, I don't think it should be a full season either, Mike. Um Come on, was, NFL! You're better than He was than inactive. This. He was he was an inactive player. If he was an active person on the roster, where I guess I mean, where they're coming from was saying that 17 games, you're you're suspended indefinitely, but at least for the year, was that he could have used insider knowledge to place those bets. By the way, that's a that's that has okay. You got to deal with that with the the book. The, the sports book. That's the sports book's problem, not yours. You're telling me if I find out secondhand from somebody that Aaron Rodgers has explosive diarrhea and isn't going to be able to play the, in the game because he's so dehydrated, I'm, I shouldn't go out and make a bet on it? Hmm. I'm definitely making a bet on it. I... It, it it seems very hypocritical that the team that the league can make money off gambling, but the players can't gamble. I don't like it. Okay, folks, we are near the end. Um, we're gonna have to worry about Russell West rest, Westbrook yeah, next I, week. I'm fine with I'm fine saving that for next week. So, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! If you don't want to hear about the mass singer, hang up now. We'll talk to you next week. God bless you. We love you. We understand. We don't want to ruin this for you. But we talk about the mass singer on the show um, every week when it is in season. Um, and we're going to talk about it this week. Rich, this week we had the uh, the reveal of all of the characters, it appears. Mm -hmm. All the characters. The good, the, the bad, and the ugly. The teams. So Mike, it begs the question: Did you are you are you team good, bad, or cuddly? Um, I really liked the cuddly guy that started off the sh the show. Uh, so did I. He was my favorite performance as well. The yeah. thingamabob. The thingamabob. I think he was the best of the of the show so far. I really could see him doing great things. But again, I've only seen one episode. So exactly. we're going to see new characters next week. We're going to get to hear some stuff. Um, it was weird. So Danielle was pointing out, and I 100% agree. Um, mm -hmm. The league, or the, the way that the game is played, normally the first time you see somebody, their, uh, their clue package is about them telling their story. Yeah, it's vaguely telling their story. But they tell their story about how they 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 got their comeuppance. Mm -hmm. This one with the commercials, I didn't really like it. I didn't catch yeah. great clues on anything. Yeah, neither did I. It, by all means, when they revealed who the Scottish Terrier was, the clues made sense. That's your first. Like spoiler. they always do. Yeah. Like they always do. They when do they, when they go through. All right. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Did so, you um, so uh, Richie just made the first spoiler? Um, the Scottish Terrier went home. Um, so I agree. Yeah. I don't think he was, but I don't think he was the worst. I don't know if there really was like a hands down that was the worst performance. Um, the two off of the team bad. I did not think were great. Uh, I would not have voted for either of those two. Personally, I didn't think they. It was be a great. hard vote, but once again, you're not voting for 
who do you think should go home? You're voting. Who had the best performance of the night? Yeah, who but was your, who was your favorite performance of the night? I don't think I don't think either of those guys had a great performance. Um, I'm, yeah. So the Scottish Terrier also almost falls off the stage and loses his head. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how they how people didn't see who it was, but again, I don't know. I wasn't watching at the time, so I mean, I was watching, but I wasn't there. So the camera angles made him d- did a great job of that. He did a good job with the camera angles. They did. He he did. So it was uh, Duff Goldman, yeah, of uh, Food Network fame, um, known basically known mostly for Ace of Cakes. Yep. But he was also on Chopped, Chopped All Stars. Chopped yeah. All Stars as well. Yeah. Great. I he I thought he did decent. I don't think he was terrible. No, I, I thought he did a good job, too, as soon as they said, like, the Mike Myers. I think it's Mike Myers. I was really hoping it was because, I mean, he brought up, like, you know, if you're not Scottish, you're cop. That was one of his six. That yeah. was one of his sketches from SNL back in the day. Yep. I, he did. So I was really hoping it was. I really it was thought it was. I thought I agreed with you on that one. Danielle decided this year to start mark, writing down my actual guesses, so I'll have a book. Um <laughs> I think T.O. actually makes sense for the thingamabob. I think that was one of the best guesses, the initial guess things. Yeah, what happened to that this year? Are they not going to do the golden ear? I don't know. They didn't mention that. They didn't mention that at all as far as how are you going to get the golden ear? Yeah, this one, it feels like it's, I mean, it almost feels like season one. Like they they're kind of just changing it up. I love it. It's it, so far the the first episode was good. I'm looking forward to next week's episode. Um, hope we get to learn more about people rather than these clue these weird clue commercial packages. So, um, so yeah, yeah Duff did great. Uh, good on him. So Rich, do you have any shout outs for the week? Um, I have one that I forgot to make last week. Yep. Uh, it was my uh, my parents' anniversary Ooh. on the first. So I how, forgot about that. How long have they been married now? 42. Wow. 42. Wow. Their anniversary was March 1st. Yeah. Yeah. That's. So are we and, having a party uh, in September, by the way? Anybody in September? A, a party in September. I don't know. Okay. We'll talk about it. And a uh, friend of the show, Joe Perry, had a birthday. This he past did. Week as well. He did. Uh, so yeah, good good week, uh, good show. Next week we are talking NFL. Uh, we'll 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 bring our our MLB preview. Uh, officially, get a lot more mm-hmm. into it. We did our over unders for the Cubs this year. Um, we might next week. We might have two polls or about. Actually, we might do it this week. What do you think about having a second poll of the over under for the Cubs? Do people think they're going to hit the over or the under? Or do you want to wait until uh... let's, let's do it the week before? Let Let's do it the week of their opening day, which okay. is April seventh for baseball. Baseball April seventh. Yeah. Okay, All folks. Right. Uh, if you are listening to us in podcast land and you want to watch us on watch our pretty faces, check us out at youtube.com uh, or. Come over to our Facebook page if you want to make comments and get comment shout outs like you heard last week from uh, from people that commented on the show. Rich, if they are watching us on either YouTube or Facebook, but they want to listen to us in the car, what should they do? Uh, find, look for us anywhere where you find your favorite podcast. Just yep. search Balls and Sticks. Yep. Folks, thank you so much. Uh, we are at a, an hour 13. Not terrible. But let's no, roll the outro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa. This is Bald and Sticks, the podcast with your hosts, Mike and Rich.